Hey everyone, my name is Ben Chaish, and one of the things that I find most interesting are those like, what's in my camera bag videos, what things are other professionals bringing to weddings, all that stuff. And if you follow me on various social media, you've probably seen that I'm currently testing out for review the Leica SL2, the Leica SL2S, and the Leica Q2 monochrome. I think it actually worked pretty well, and so I wanted to share both what's in my camera bag, along with just all of the stuff that's in there and all of the little knickknacks and things that help my day run a little bit more smoothly. And then also just, you know, figuring out like, what am I actually bringing? What does a Leica kit look like for a wedding photographer? So we'll jump in and see all the stuff I brought. And while this video definitely isn't sponsored, a few of the things that I'm gonna be showing are not necessarily sponsored things at all, but they are things that companies have gifted to me. But obviously I'm actually using them as part of my kit in real world use, not part of some sponsored gig. Um, know that the Leica SL2, Leica the SL2S, the monochrome, all of those things are loaned to me from KEH Camera, so thank you to them. I'm definitely doing a review on all of those things soon, but as part of the whole review process, um, obviously I wanted to put it into real world use. Uh, I'll definitely link all of those things below in order, and I'll try to make chapter markers for each section in terms of like bags and lenses and lighting and all that good stuff. If you're interested, you can check out that in the description below, as well as the little bar thing here on the bottom of the screen. This is the uh, Nomadic Peter McKinnon bag, but this bag is obviously enormous and fits all of the things that I need in a very amazing way. And it's pretty well built and, you know, is just kind of everything I was looking for in a camera backpack. I'll probably do a more long-term review now that I've had it all summer and I've used it on lots of trips, but that is that bag. And then the new Holdfast Quiver bag is my new favorite. I know I reviewed the other Romographer bag, I believe it's called or something, but for traveling when I'm flying somewhere, being able to pack this bag up because it's so small and I can just fold it up and put it in my suitcase or in this bag has been clutch. And then, oh, <laughs> this is sort of overkill, but this is the Think Tank International version, I don't know, three or something like that. Uh, it's a carry-on, international standards, all that stuff. And I've taken this bag all over the world, literally to like every, almost every continent. Um, it's amazing. It fits in every overhead compartment, except for those tiny, tiny little ones where you can't literally fit anything. So we'll start with the backpack and with the kind of carry on roller thing here. And uh, yeah, roll from there. Something I consider essential to the way I work is this hold fast money maker. I just love the dual camera strap setup here. And then this bag is brilliant because it just fits on to the back of this strap. And then I can either use this on the front or the back. I can wear it behind me to where it just hangs off the back or I can put it in the front kind of like a fanny pack style. And then um, the cameras are still free to roam and everything. All right, so right off the bat, this again is that Nomadic Peter McKinnon. It's like the version one or whatever because I think he came out with like an everyday one, but this is the big one. And you can see here that is super useful. It opens up and expands right here, which is absolutely fantastic because it allows me to put big things like these light stands on here. Obviously, I don't travel with these, although I could. I could probably fit these into a overhead compartment and stuff. But I just picked these up last week right before my trip. They are more of like a tripod kind of setup, but you know, they, they open up this way. They're by k f Concept. Um, they're like 50 bucks and they go about seven feet-ish and they're super lightweight and fit the capacity that I needed for a carry-on if I needed to. They don't hold a super high capacity in terms of weight in case you need something really, really heavy, but I feel like they did a pretty good job for my particular needs at this last wedding. And then the other thing I usually have in here that I didn't actually bring this time, uh, just because I unloaded them in my house, is I put these on each side and then I usually have a pair of shoes. And this is like the biggest wedding pro tip that I can give outside of like the normal things that you would always hear. But if you are shooting for hours and hours on end, I don't care how comfortable your shoes are, your feet are gonna get tired, they're gonna hurt. And one of the things that I learned, this sounds so pretentious, but I learned when I was trekking in the Himalayas was we would stop every few hours and we would change our socks 
and we would change into something different so that our feet A, wouldn't sweat and be just soggy and wet, but also that if you change your socks and things, then your feet would have different kind of pressure points that would be hitting as you went. And so I've taken that same concept where I wear kind of a slightly nicer pair of shoes at the beginning of the day and then change into a pair of like all black Nikes or something like that, or all black Adidas, night joggers or something at the end of the day. And that way uh, my feet are saved a little bit and uh, you know, I'm moving into a more comfortable shoe. It just helped me tremendously ever since I've been doing that, which I've probably started doing like a decade ago. That's also normally in here, which can totally fit because it has this expansion section. Moving on to the important stuff, but on the other side of this bag here, one thing that is also super important is having some water. Uh, it keeps everything cold. It's super compact. I'm just a big fan of Stanley stuff. And so this has been super helpful and nice. The worst thing that you can do is not drink water. One of my other wedding day rules is that if someone offers me water, no matter how inconvenient it might be for them to get me water, if they offered it, I say yes every time, no matter what, because there's nothing worse than being dehydrated and you really start to get that dehydration headache right as like the music and dancing starts, pounding bass in your head as you have a headache and you're dehydrated and it's at the end of the day and then you're grumpy and no one likes that. And then at the top of this bag, before we jump in all the way, there's just like some extra things like some lar bars. You never know if you're gonna get fed <laughs> at a wedding and just small things like some Advil for those headaches. So it's just kind of like my catch all pocket of sorts. All right, now we'll get into the actual kit here and see what's going on on the real inside. Okay, so this backpack opens up like so. Here is the inside of the bag and we've just got all sorts of stuff. But the nice part about this is it just fits so much stuff. Like I even have space right here and this is still almost my whole kit. I think I have one lens that is in the other bag, but overall, like we got a ton of stuff. So the first bit before we get into the actual camera stuff is this anchor charger battery combo thing. So it's got a USB C right here, as well as two other USBs, but it also has an AC outlet. For me, sometimes I don't have a USB version of a charger, especially like this uh, Leica SL2S. I don't have the charger for this and the Q2 as far as like I don't own a USB version. And so I'm able to just take that actual native charger, plug it into the actual outlet, and charge those batteries when I'm at the reception or whatever. I just have a ton of times where I don't actually have a wall outlet that I can plug things into. So recharging batteries and flashes and things like that is super helpful. And usually I don't actually need the extra batteries, but I always want to just be recharging the ones that I have just in case. There'd be nothing worse than me being stuck at a wedding with no batteries, no way to actually charge anything. They're not cheap, but for the fact that you just get so much versatility out of it, it's totally worth it. I basically put a mask in every bag just in case I need it. I also bring a GoPro with the max lens mod. I can toss this on the top of a camera like this Q2 monochrome. And the sort of brilliant thing about this is that A, it actually doesn't really look that overbearing. It kind of just looks the same as if I had a flash on the top. So it's not even bigger than having a flash. So it looks pretty native and like, yeah, people know what a GoPro is, so it's fine, but it doesn't look as much like a GoPro or as much like I'm filming. And so that definitely helps. And then adding the max lens mod thing makes it so that I don't actually need to worry about the horizon or leveling things, or even if I'm doing things regular and then I turn the camera to go vertical, the horizon just stays level and then you actually see the lens pop up on the side, which ends up being pretty fantastic. For behind the scenes things, I do a lot of Patreon videos where I'll shoot like an entire ceremony and then just show the footage from that. Now that I took out a camera, we might as well go on cameras. Normally I don't own this camera, but obviously I brought it for this uh, wedding. This is a Q2 monochrome and one of the things that I was super happy with was I did a bunch of the dance floor stuff with this just direct flash with this small little flash. I think the 28 millimeter works really well and that has been a fun little combo there. This is the Leica SL2S and there is a lot of things that I absolutely loved about it and things that 
I wasn't as happy about, but this camera paired with this lens um, for the vast majority of people, this particular combo is probably the best wedding kind of kit that Leica has to offer. It has incredible low light. This lens is just absolutely unbelievable. The 50 Apo Summicron. Lots to love about this. A few things not to love and we'll definitely hit that stuff uh, in the full review. But the Leica SL2S was a super fun camera to have. And then the good old Leica M10s. These are the cameras that I bring to every wedding. I might bring the GFX or some Fujifilm stuff or the Canon R6 or um, all these possible odd cameras I've tried or some film cameras. But this M10 as well as this M10 are just like the cameras that I bring to every wedding, no matter what, every elopement, no matter what, these are just like my kit. I always have these two on me at all times. And then they pair with this Leica 50 millimeter Sumalux. So the silver goes with the silver body. On our black camera, we roll with the 28 Sumicron. Having a kit that just is really, really small and also I think just looks awesome, I always get a lot of comments about the cameras and how cool they look. This is like the kit. So if I don't have anything else, this is the only stuff that no matter what these four items, these two cameras, these two lenses are with me at every wedding, no matter what. And I've been super, super happy with that setup. I'll also say attached to the Q2 monochrome is uh, a strap that Todd from Clever Supply Co made just as like kind of a tester. Um, so it's a little bit thinner of the leather, but it's it's their basic adjustable strap, which has that Peak Design hardware, which all of these cameras have. So typically there's one of these cameras around my neck and then these two are on the Holdfast strap, which always has worked out well for me. And then the other lens that I actually didn't use at all and haven't really used that much this season, unfortunately, is this Zeiss 35 1.4. If you follow the channel, I've done like a full review on this and talked about how incredible it is. It's just that I've moved kind of away from the 35 millimeter focal length lately. And so it is definitely in there as a backup or if I decide that I need a 35 for something, that's kind of where I go. And then this monstrosity of a lens uh, is the other lens that I bring to every wedding. And then it also has the tripod foot. And so I always stick this D ring for the hold fast strap on here. And so having the ability to have it on the mounting point here instead of on the body, it definitely relieves some stress and all that kind of stuff. But this is the TT Artisan 90 millimeter F 1.25. And I use this both on the Leica M10 and the SL2S. Um, with an adapter over there. So that was super helpful. And then these Leica chargers are from Nightcore. And I've always used these for a long, long time. And I just plug these into that battery bank. Um, and so as soon as I get done with some in here, then they just go into here and get recharged. And so I always have fresh batteries. I had so many direct messages about this and I don't think they make it anymore, but it's the Viltrox. JY610 version two. It is very, very small and fits on all these small Leica cameras really, really well. I use them all manual, all that kind of stuff, but um, they're fantastic. And then the other one is the Godox TT350C. This just gives me a little bit more flexibility in case I want to bounce flash a little bit more. It gives me a little bit more power slightly faster recycle times. It's still a much smaller speed light than your typical one, but I've definitely been using this one as kind of my main flash. And then this one is sort of as like a backup or on a secondary camera. And then in here, we just have, a, you know, the most random stuff like extra batteries. One of the things that came with this nomadic bag was this battery holder. These fit the Leica batteries really well, the Fujifilm batteries really well, the Canon batteries really well, the GFX batteries are too thick. Um, but I believe the Leica SL2S batteries would fit well. Yep. So that fits in there as well. So these are the Leica SLQ new batteries. Um, these are the M10 batteries. So it just is easy to toss in a bag and then I don't worry about it falling out or anything like that. So those are the contents of this bag. So we'll kind of repack slightly and 
Move on to the lighting bag, which is something completely new for me, but has been pretty exciting for a lot of reasons that we will get into in a sec. All right, and then this is that Think Tank bag that I've used for years and years and years. And I was trying to get away from like having a roller bag and trying to make my system lightweight and I achieved that. But then as soon as I did, I realized like, there's actually things I'm missing in this kit. And one of the things that I've been waiting for for a long, 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 long time is specifically this Aperture LS60X. It is a 60 watt bicolor light that is absolutely fantastic. It's built really, really well. And it actually has a legitimate, like focusable lens with a spherical elements. You can change the beam angle. So as I turn this, I think the actual light um, itself moves and then combining that with their little set of barn doors. So you stick these little barn doors on the front of the light and then you can literally just figure out where you want the light to go and not to go. And this was fantastic. It enabled me to just like focus the light in right here and then move these in and out to just kind of block out where I actually want it to be and where I didn't want it to be. And it was amazing. And then there's another light in here that I'm gonna purposely leave this out of focus because uh, I'm doing a review on it soon and it's not actually out yet. And then the final lens in here, um, I don't know why it ended up in this bag, but it did, is the Voigtlander 21 Ultron. This is the lens that I use for a lot of like scene setting things and a lot of kind of like end of the night uh, establishing shots. And I use it for all of like the party dancing stuff at the end, it is its own focus and I have a whole video on that lens. So if you are interested, you can check it out. And then kind of like the, one of the more splurge purchases of the year for me was this Peak Design tripod. I hate tripods. I think they're stupid. I think they're dumb. I think they take up space and I don't use them. This is the first tripod that I've actually wanted to use and actually have used. I can put it on the side of the backpack or I can just stick it in here. Fits really well and is honestly just a fantastic option. So thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. If you've made it this far, leave your favorite emoji, maybe like the camera emoji or something like that in the comments because I'm always interested because this is probably gonna be a super long video. There's a ton of these that I have done videos on already if you're interested, and then a ton of these that I will be doing videos on in the coming future here. So subscribe if you aren't already, and I will see you all on the next one.